This experiment is quite simple and you can actually do this without touching the apparatus. I want to show you the easiest way to manipulate this course and still get your answer correctly. When you plot your graph, you're still going to get your A+. Plus. Now, to watch this video to the end and also subscribe to this channel. With no further ado, let's get right into the video. Now, the first thing I'm going to ask is for you to measure the CG of a meter rule by balancing it on a knife edge. How do you do that? You're going to place it this way and on the table, then place the meter rule and see where it's going to balance horizontally. Now, mind you, meter rule has different CG depending on how it is produced. Some meter rule are strong, some are worse, light, some are in between strong and light. Okay, so it depends on the value of the meter rule that you have that will give you your CG. The CG is not a fixed value, it's not like a fixed point. That you say you must if you don't have it you are wrong no they map range in physics so i'm going to give you the range of the cg that if you're right it should be accepted so, so the cg ranges from cg ranges from 48.50 to 50.40 centimeters it is accepted now if you measure your own and it's giving you 49.00 you are correct and you have 50.00, you are still correct because it is within this range. Do you understand? The examiner is not there to see what you have. But whatever thing you record is going to use it to judge you. Now, for the purpose of what I'm teaching today, I'm going to use a CG of 49.5. So my CG for today's class is going to be 49.50 centimeters. Okay? And that is what I recorded here. Now, using my CG of 49.50 centimeters, and if this question says we should keep this mass labeled N at a fixed point, which is like they gave us a distance of 30 centimeters, this distance might differ in your own case, but just understand the concept I'm trying to put out. If this is kept constant and you already know your CG, remember I am using this, okay, 49.50. So I already know the distance, which is what? A. All right? What is that A? A simply means what? The CG minus what? The 30. So I can know the distance. So my A is equals to 49.50 minus 30. It's now going to give me 19.50 centimeters. Do you understand? Now, having known my A, which they say, the question says, this must be constant. The position of CG and this must be kept constant throughout the experiment. That means you're not going to touch this side. Okay? Now, if you're not going to touch this side, and we're already going to, and we are going to vary the mass here. That means as the mass are changing, as the masses are changing, this distance is going to do what change. So what you are varying in this experiment is just that, the mass and the distance. Do you understand? Now, from the principle of moment, which says that what? Clockwise moment equals anti-clockwise moment. So we can use it to get the distance D. Now the principle of moment states that what? Clockwise moment. Look at the clockwise. This is clockwise moment. Why this is what? Anti-clockwise moment. They are equal to each other, right? Clockwise moment equals anti-clockwise moment. Now the clockwise moment is when you keep your hand this way, you know your clock, it goes this way. This clock what? clockwise right now the distance is from here to here that is the d okay once it's crosses it is no longer what clockwise it becomes anti-clockwise all right so having known this if this is known and this is known and the mass is already given we can get the distance using the clockwise moment or anti-clockwise moment so let me show you the formula the formula we're going to use for this is what the clockwise moment is what m times what d i would say Clockwise moment is M times what? D. Then it's equal to what? The N times what? A. Do you understand? Now, because we already know our what? N, which is what? 100 gram what? Mass. Now, we already know our what? A, which is what I measured to be 19.50 centimeters. You can see it now. We can actually get this. Because the mass will be given and it will be changing because the question says set of masses. That means you're going to be varying the masses. You're going to be varying the masses. Now, if you vary a mass, we can get the distance with this formula. You can see it now. So, now, I have a mass of 40 gram. If I place this mass of 40 gram here, I can get this D simply by putting this. Now, if this is known, 
which is 40 gram, I can guess my distance, right? I'm going to be slotting different values of masses to have a different values of what? D. That's what I'm going to record here. Hope that is clear. So let's work it out with our calculator. Now having known this, I'm going to say that what? The M1 times D1, right? Force times what? Perpendicular distance. Because what we define as force multiplied by perpendicular distance, okay? And because I'm going to be varying the masses to get what? Different distance. Now it is equal to what? The N times what? A. Okay? Now let's put in our values to see what you're going to be working with. I'm going to say my M1 D1 is equal to what? My M given is 100, 100 times 1950. Okay? Now I'm going to have, sorry, I have 19.50. I'm going to have M1 D1 is equal to what? 1950. Do you understand? So I want to make this a subject by putting the values of what m now when m equals what 40 what gram you're going to find the value of what d so what are you saying you're going to say that the d1 is equal to 1950 over what m1 knowing that my m1 is going to be what 40 gram okay so i'm going to be using this formula by varying the values of what the masses to get the different values of m is that okay? So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay? Now, when I'm done with D1, when M is what? 40. I have that. Now, I'll do what? For D2. When M is what? 50. I'll get the different distances. And if you balance this horizontally on your knife edge, you're going to get accurate to the same thing or close to it. Of which the examiner will see it and mark it for you because this is what you measured and it was quite correct. Okay? Now, let's get the value. D1 is equal to what? 1950 over what? M1, right? And what is my M1? When M equals 40, I will say what? 1950 over 40, right? Now I'm going to divide with your calculator by saying 1950 divided by 40. I'm going to have what? 48.75 centimeters. Okay? Now, let's proceed again by saying that D2 is equal to 1950 over what? M2, which is 1950 over 50. Now, depending on the masses you are giving to vary in your question, but just follow this method, you're going to get this correctly. Now, I'm going to divide by saying 1950 divided by 50 is going to give me you can see 39.00 centimeters, right? Okay. Now, the next one, which is D3, equals 1950 over M3, which is 1950 over 60. That is when the mass is 60. So, you divide again. You have 1950 divided by 60. And this is going to give me what? 32.5 what? zero centimeters okay all right so the next one which is what d4 is equal to 1950 over what m4 that is 1950 over 70. so simply divide again to get 27.5 8, okay 86 approximately Okay, 80 centimeters. Then the last one becomes, which is D5, is equal to 1950 over M5, then which is equal to 1950 over 80. Okay, so let's divide it. That gives me 24.38 centimeters. Right now, for us to put in our values, remember that we cannot see these two digits in um, on a mixer rule. Okay, now what you are going to do is to approximate. So, for this value, you're going to use what 48.8 centimeters. I can say 80 to be in two decimal places. Now, for this, one, I'm going to use what I'm going to use 27.9 
zero centimeters. Okay, this is going to be what twenty four point four zero centimeters. Do you understand? So that is what I'm going to record in your table of values. So let's go for this one. My D becomes forty eight point eight zero. This is thirty nine point zero zero. This is thirty two point five zero. This is 27.90 and this is 24.40. You can see it now. So with this, you have gotten your what? Your readings. Quite simple. Okay. Now, you may be asked to find the inverse. Inverse of the distance. Inverse simply means 1 over what? D. Okay. Whatever thing you have, you just have to have a column for it. By saying this is what? 1 over 48.80. Anything you have, you leave it in three decimal places. And your units must be in the centimeter. Is that okay? You will be asked to plot a graph of M against D inverse. I've already told you how to get your D inverse. Inverse means 1 over, simple, 1 divided by in your calculator, anything is gives you approximate it to three decimal places and make sure you put it in three decimal places. And your units will have what centimeter inverse. Do you understand? Okay, if you want, want me to show you how to plot this graph, you can drop in the comment section. And the graph says what a graph of what m versus d inverse. Do you understand? So this will be on the vertical axis, or this will be on the horizontal axis. With this, you can be able to comfortably get your values. And if your slope have intercept with you, you probably know where you sketch it. And remember the line of best fit, okay? With this, you can comfortably get your readings, plot your graph, and smash your A+. Plus. Now, if this video was able to help someone out there, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications to get notified each time I post videos. And lastly, do not forget to share so that other students that prepare for this same forthcoming exam can see it and learn from there. I'll see you next time in the next one. Bye for now.